Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. There we go. That's the Children's National Hospital I know. And I'm Kurt Newman. I have the great privilege of being the president and CEO here at Children's. And we are about two weeks away from what? Christmas. There you go. And usually that means that Santa and Mrs. Claus are really busy. And, you know, they've got a tight calendar. And, you know, it's really hard to get them on the phone or email or text. But because this is a really special day, they've come down here from the North Pole. They've come here to our hospital to join all of you. So I'd love you to welcome Mr. and Mrs. Santa Claus. We also have a very special guest, uh, and this is just unbelievable because he uh, was here last year and has come back, and that's our children's author, Todd Zimmerman. He wrote the book that the First Lady, Mrs. Trump, will read today called Oliver the Ornament Meets Bell. Now, you might remember Todd when he joined us last year with his book, Oliver the Ornament. And he is joined by Teddy Lou, and Teddy's here in the audience, the illustrator. There he is right there. And both books teach children the important message of kindness, especially in the face of bullying. So let's welcome Todd and Teddy. There's Todd. And Todd, I think you have something there. Thank you so much, Dr. Newman. It's a pleasure to be here again. In just a few moments, we're all going to hear Mrs. Trump read Oliver the Ornament Meets Bell. Now, some of you who weren't here last year might not know that this is a series of books. There's actually seven, so you don't really know the background of the story. I'm going to tell you real quickly how this story started. So this, the first story starts out on Thanksgiving night when the family is going to bed. But not everybody in the house is going to bed. The ornaments in the attic are just getting up. And as they get up, they come to life, and they're getting ready for the big day tomorrow when they're going to be decorating their Christmas tree. But then they realize that Oliver, the star of our, the star of our book, has a broken arm. And because he has a broken arm, he can't do certain things. But even though he can't do certain things, he has, has this great spirit. And that great spirit helps him overcome all odds to save the day. So now we're going to hear Mrs. Trump read the continuation of Oliver the Ornament Meets Bell. That's awesome. Thank you. So we've got a lot to look forward here. We're going to hear a great story. Uh, but Mrs. Uh, Trump, the First Lady, has already been graciously spending time with some of our children upstairs in our hospital. And we always hear about uh, the warmth that she displays, and when you're with her, you just see it, the special memories she creates for the children and the families. And more than once on her trips to Children's National, the First Lady has spent time with a real special patient of ours, Kellen McLean, who has bravely battled leukemia and is winning that fight. So I would like, we have a special treat here because I would like to invite Kellen to the podium. Kellen? Thank you, Dr. Newman. Hello, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my great honor to introduce to you today a special person. The First Lady of the United States, Mrs. Melania Trump. And her patient escort, Sammy, who's already seated, and Declan McCann. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Nice to be here again. Thank you, Sammy. Thank you very much. And this is the book, I will read it, Oliver, the Ornament Meets Bell. Do you know the book? Did you read it before? No? 
Christmas season started with mom and dad telling Henry and Holly about the ornaments on their tree. And that was just the beginning of the holiday fun for the entire Nelson household. I love the stories, Krista reclaimed. Me too, Edsel said. But there is a lot of more to the story of how Belle entered their collection. Please tell us, Henry asked. Oliver reminded them that at first he was the only ornament on the tree. That didn't last long because the next day your mom came home with a box of beautiful ornaments, Oliver said. Suddenly I was surrounded by so many magical friends, or so I thought. What do you mean? Holly asked. Well, I went up to the ornaments and introduced myself, Oliver explained, but sadly none of them answered. That didn't last long, continued Oliver, because I began playing the most wonderful game of make-believe. I went back to each of the ornaments and introduced myself again. I said, hello, Mr. Red Ornament, my name is Oliver. Mr. Red Ornament replied, hello, Oliver, my name is Edsel. I said, hello, Miss Blue Ornament. She responded, nice to meet you, I'm Crystal. Then I got to Mrs. Green Ornament. But before I could say hello, she said, hi, Oliver, I'm Mary. The children were amazed. Oliver's imagination brought all the ornaments to life. What happened next? They asked. We started by singing our favorite Christmas carols, Oliver said. Just then the ornaments heard a very scary laugh coming from the attic. Not wanting the children to hear the noise, the ornaments began singing Christmas carols, drowning out the scary laughter. Then the doorbell rang. It was Henry and Holly's friends, Stephen and Rudy. So mom and dad bundled the children up to go outside to build a snowman. Back in the living room, the ornaments were scared. Where did that laugh come from? Belle asked. It's from a really mean ornament, Oliver said. Her name is Nellie. Who is Nelly? Abby asked. She's mean and she's done some really naughty stuff, Oliver said. She glued my ladder down so it stuck, Edsel said. She bullied me and called me useless, Bucked added. Joan and Marley said, I've got to talk to Nelly. It's Christmas after all. That sounds like a bad idea, Norb and Teddy shouted, but Marley and Joan were determined, so they flew off to meet her. On the way, Marley and Joan could see it was a cold and snowy and starting to get dark. They were almost at the attic window when they heard a voice call out, come in here and play with me. All the window, at the window, Marley and Joan tried to open it, but it was too heavy. Try harder, Nellie snickered. I want to play. Marley and Joan tried harder and got the window open, but as they did, Nellie pulled a cord, crashing it down, trapping them both. The angels looked at each other, then looked back to see Nellie laughing at both of them. I guess we are in a pickle now, Marley said. Marley and Joan tried to open the window, but they couldn't. They were getting cold and scared. Inside, Nelly laughed at them. Marley sound your horn, Joan said, but Marley didn't want to. It, was, it would make too much noise. Marley, Joan insisted, sound the horn. So Marley sounded the horn to let other ornaments know they were in trouble. Oliver and Edsel hopped off the tree and went outside. 
and saw that Marley and Joan were stuck, cold and shivering. Oliver, I'm not going to be able to help. Nearly glued my ladder down. I'm useless, Edsel said. Edsel, you're strong enough to break the glue. Encourage Oliver. With that encouragement, Edsel broke the glue and extended the ladder. Oliver ran up the ladder and pushed the window as hard as he could. It finally opened, freeing Marley and Joan. The angels flew back in the house. As they did, Joan looked back and said, Keep up the good work. All the ornaments cheered Oliver and Edsel. Marley and Joan were revealed but still shivering. We have got to get through Nelly, Joan said. I think she said. Marley agreed and they convinced all the others to find a way to cheer her up. Back in the attic, Nelly didn't understand why Marley and Joan had tried to be kind to her. It must be a trick, she thought. The children came back inside and raced to the tree. Building the snowman was fun, Holly said. Next time, we will bring you with us. We are fine we are where we are, Marley and Joan said. We will just stay put. Tell us the rest of the story, how you met Belle, Henry said. It was fun at first, playing and singing with all my friends, Oliver said. I never knew make-believe could be so magical, but after a while it started getting harder and harder. What happened? Henry asked. One, one by one, friends stopped talking and playing with me. I spoke to them, but none answered. I felt all alone, and it was Christmas Eve, Oliver choked up, so Belle finished the story. Everyone was singing carols and having fun, but sadly, Oliver felt all alone. That's so sad, Oliver, Holly said. Well, thanks to Santa, it turned out perfect, Oliver answered. What happened with Santa? Henry asked. That night, a noise came from the fireplace. Oliver said. When I looked, Santa was filling the stockings. Santa saw me and could tell me I was sad. After I told him what I was wrong, he said, Oliver, as long as you believe in the magic of kindness and of Christmas, you will never be alone. Just keep believing. I promise, Santa, I would. On Christmas morning, your dad came over to exchange your gifts with your mom. He gave her a sweater and the gave him a watch. Then he gave her a small box. What was it? Holly asked. A beautiful bell ornament. Your dad brought it for your mom because she lived on Bell Street, Oliver said. Both Henry and Holly laughed. That's what daddy told us earlier. Holly said. After your mom and dad left, I remember Santa's words, said Oliver. So I decided to speak to the new ornament. Hello, my name is Oliver, I said. Belle's eyes opened and the, she replied. It's very nice to meet you, Oliver. My name is Belle. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, I finally had a real friend. That was our first Christmas, Belle said and that made it special. But each Christmas becomes more special because we have even more wonderful memories. Later that night, when the family fell asleep, the magic of Christmas lit the tree and all the ornaments sang together. Their hearts were filled with joy, remembering the story of Oliver's first Christmas with Belle and thinking about their plans to become friends with Nelly. With those happy thoughts, everyone in Nelson's household went to sleep. Merry Christmas and happy and healthy new year. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you so much for that beautiful reading of my story, Oliver the Ornament Meets Bell, Mrs. Trump. And thank you for everything that you do to promote kindness and fight bullying here and around the world. Today we're going to sign a book, we're going to both sign a book if you would, and we're going to donate this book to the Children Resource Center here at Children's National Hospital. We know you have so many invi invitations, so many things you could be doing, and it's just so meaningful that you would come be with us today and read the story for all the children and uh, see all the kids in the hospital. So thank you so much. I know how much they appreciate your generosity, your warmth, uh, and the feeling. It's just uh, so inspiring. So all of us here at Children's wanted to express our gratitude back to you with some uh, gifts, and these are an expression of our gratitude from the children and the families. It's very special. Some presents, right, for Christmas? Thank you very much. So for more than 70 years, Children's National has had the great privilege of hosting the First Ladies of the United States. And it's all, always one of the most special days of the year. And if you think about it, 70 years tradition and Children's National itself is 150 years old. Next year, we're gonna have a big birthday party. So uh, uh, look forward to that. Thank you, Mrs. Trump, for continuing the tradition. Thank you for having me. A very special place with amazing doctors and nurses. Merry Christmas again. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. And a happy new year. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a happy new year. The tidings we bring to you and your king. The tidings for Christmas and a happy new year. We wish, we wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a happy new year. Happy New Year. 
Good tidings we bring to you and your king. Good tidings for Christmas and a happy new year. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a happy new year. Navidad, feliz Navidad, feliz Navidad, prospero año y felicidad. Feliz Navidad, feliz Navidad, feliz Navidad, prospero año y felicidad. I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas. I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas. I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas from the bottom of my heart. I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas. I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas. I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas from the bottom of my heart. <laughs>